Hey everyone, this is Leanne from Of Love and Ship Lap and the founder of Sub That Sublimation Graphics and Tutorials on YouTube and Facebook. Please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss out on any of our tutorials. Tonight's sublimation tutorial is how to sublimate a hooded baby bath towel from Johnson's Plastics Plus. This product is such a fun item to create if you cater to the kids market. It makes the perfect item to add as part of a gift set to really drive up your profits or to simply sell as a personalized item in your shop. Here's a little look at this towel. It is approximately 32 inches by 32 inches, so a really great size towel for babies and toddlers alike. The terry cloth um, body is super absorbent and the polyester hood gives you a sizable space to be able to sublimate. The first thing that we're gonna do is go ahead and get our measurements and then set our design up in Affinity Designer and send it off to print with our new Epson SureColor F570, also from Johnson's Plastics. Let's turn around and get started. Here is a look at the hooded baby bath towel from Johnson's Plastics Plus. This is available in both blue and pink. The sublimation area is this white hooded pouch that you can choose to print full bleed or isolate a design somewhere in the center uh, and maybe add personalization. I can think of a lot of fun ideas to do with this towel, but the biggest thing is going to opt for the personalization option because that is going to be how you get the maximum profit on an item like this that tends to cost a little bit more. Personalized items for babies are incredibly popular, so that's a fairly easy concept to push with this product. The first thing that you wanna do when you unpack this is if there's any wrinkles in this white area, you wanna go ahead and iron them out or give it a quick little pre-press just so it's nice and flat to get your measurements. I'm not gonna be doing a full bleed design today, but I do wanna talk about it just for a minute for those of you who might choose to do it. If you're gonna do a full bleed design, you're going to want to get the measurements for the total triangle. And then the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is add heat tape along the pink bias area and also underneath this flap or add an extra piece of blowout paper here. That is what is going to protect any ink overage on this towel, and it's gonna help maximize the professional look of your product. Again, just because we're making something at home or making something handmade doesn't mean that we don't want it to look like a professional product because that is what elevates the price point on these and ensures that customers are going to pay the money that we value our products at. Presentation is everything in that regards. So let's go ahead and get our full size triangle measurements just for reference. We wanna make sure we got this nice and flat and everything's pulled nice and taut. And with that, we have 18 and a half inches for our width. We wanna try and get this as close to the middle as we can here. We're looking at seven and three quarters for our height. So that's gonna be our total measurements. So if you wanted to do a full bleed, this is what you would go by. Of course, always measure your own product. That's just good standard practice because manufacturing variances can change this up to a half an inch and you wanna make sure that you are printing uh, the print accordingly to actually fit what space you want to fill. Measuring is key. If you don't know how to read a tape measure, there is a free printable ruler guide on my website. That link is in the video description as well as the link for this product and anything else that we use today. Now, if you are planning on doing just like a central located design or maybe monogram, it's really kind of personal preference. You can just eyeball it to what you think looks best. So for me, I always try and leave a good little buffer space because that is just good professional practice. And with that in mind, I'm thinking about five and a half inches is gonna be my ideal height. Now let's have a look at our width. I would say about 11 inches, maybe even 10 and a half is where I would like to have the width at a maximum. That's gonna give this design the ability to fill this space and up through here. 
So you could do a character and a name below. You could do a split monogram. Um, really anything like that that will fill this space would look really good on this kind of towel. So I'm going to go with the 10 and a half measurement because I already have letter size paper in my printer and this will just allow me to go ahead and use that as it is. Now we are using our new Epson F570 today. Ta -da! I know you guys are really excited to get to see this printer in action. Um, it was incredibly easy to set up. It runs so smoothly. I honestly can't believe it. It almost didn't seem real. I was a little afraid to get rid of my old sublimation printer because, you know, I'm just so used to it, <laughs> like many of you. Um, when, you're, when you've got something that's all worked in, you get a little hesitant to uh, let it go, but turns out I don't have any issue letting it go because that's how great this Epson F570 is. So this is the SureColor F570. It is a sublimation ready printer. It has the ability to print 24 inches wide. There is rolled paper in the back. And then of course we have this paper slot where you can add in whichever size paper you would like. Currently I have letter size in there, but the last thing I printed was tumblers. So we're gonna wanna come over here to the screen, wake it on up, come to our paper setting. And you can see that auto sheet paper and it says general purchase rigid. We're gonna go ahead and choose change paper type, paper size. And we're gonna click on paper type and we're gonna choose general purpose textile. That's all that we have to do because it was on hard surface before and now it's on textile. Now, I didn't change the paper. I'm using my printer jack sublimation paper with the pink backing. The print side is facing forward. So the white side is facing forward and then the pink side is back. Um, we don't have to change paper for textile versus a rigid surface. It's just a matter of adjusting the settings in the printer so that the output is going to be where it needs to be for our substrate. So let's go ahead and hop over to Affinity Designer and get our design set up. I've decided to go with a split monogram for this hooded baby bath towel and have the baby's name on the lower portion of the letter where it is split. I'm going to be using this red polka dot doodle alphabet from Creative Fabrica for the monogram letter. I thought that this was such a cute little font that was available um, and it really fits the theme of the nursery, which is Minnie Mouse. So by using this, I am able to match the theme of the nursery for this baby without violating trademark. And this is one of the best ways to go about coordinating with things that are in fact copywritten or trademarked and keep your business safe. So I've already gone ahead and downloaded this. It is a PNG alphabet. So each letter and number is in its own individual PNG file. We're going to be working in Affinity Designer version 2 today. Now, if you're using version 1, the overall steps that you will follow will be the same. There are a few changes to the look of the version 2 layout, but overall everything is the same as version 1. There's just the addition of a couple of extra tools. If you are new to Affinity Designer or interested in learning everything there is to know about this software, be sure to check out the Affinity Designer Digital Graphic Design Masterclass for Sublimation, which is linked below in the video description. This is our beginner-friendly 100-hour video course specifically tailored for the sublimation industry. You will learn everything there is to know about the software and be provided with updates related to version 2 as the software continues to evolve and add new tools and features completely free of charge. Um, this video course is built in a progressive format that ensures your success, has fun design challenges built in, and includes one-on-one -on -one email support if you need help. That link is below in the video description. Use the code SUBTHAT to save $30. The first thing that we want to do is open up a document that is the size of the page we are printing on. So we already confirmed that we are using letter size paper today, so we will come to File, new and go ahead and come to the print section and I'm going to choose letter. If you're using version one, your document setup panel looks a little bit different. Uh, there's more like icons and things like that, but it's still very easy to navigate. So you're going to look for letter. 
I'm going to come over here to the margins and I'm going to deselect that because I don't need margins on my page. I just find them distracting. And I'm going to come to color and I'm going to deselect or select transparent background. Your color formats for sublimation should be RGB slash 8. And your color profile should be sRGB IEC 61966-2.1. This is the newest color profile for the format RGB slash 8. And this is relevant to pretty much all newer computers. Now, some Mac computers and older Windows computers benefit from using the older format, which is... Adobe RGB 1998. So if you happen to be using a Mac or an older Windows computer and you feel like your colors are not quite right, try this first. Your color setup options for your document are pretty much universal for all printers. It does not matter. Any additional settings that you might make, like your ICC profile for some printers, is done in your printer's property section that is all operates separately from this design software. So once we have that color set up, we can go ahead and click Create. The first thing I want to do is import that A that's going to be used as my big monogram letter. We will select our Place Image tool, this little picture-looking icon, and find the A in our folder, click Open, and then simply click and drag to resize it onto your canvas. Now I can already see that my boundary box is pretty close to the top and bottom. Uh, so actually it's exact on the top and bottom. So that makes this easy to resize. We're going to come to the transform panel, which should be in the bottom right of your screen. We want to come over to where we see the width and the height and make sure that our aspect ratio is locked. Now, if you're using version one, this is going to look like an affinity symbol. And when it's locked, you're going to see little spider arms coming off of it. So version two, broken link, linked link. That's the difference between locked and unlocked. So I'm going to set my height for this to the height that we determined would be best for our design, which is 5.5 inches. Now I love everything centered on my document, so I'm going to go ahead and center that. The red and green line that you currently see is what's called a snapping guide, and those are activated when you have this magnet icon selected in the uh, up in your toolbar. You can click this drop down, make sure everything is check marks that needs to be. Do not check mark show snapping candidates. It will leave a purple line around um, every single object and absolutely drive you crazy, I promise. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see just a little bit better. Now I want to make this a split monogram. So this is very easy to do. I don't necessarily need to actually split the letter. But what I'm going to do is just take my rectangle tool. I'm going to click and drag. Kind of get it sized about how I want. I'm really just eyeballing it. Center it. And then with that rectangle layer selected, I'm going to come to this drop down in the layers panel. And I'm going to choose erase. That's it. It's that easy. Uh, this is the best option if you're doing any kind of PNG work and you just want to create a nice erase space, you can use that erase layer. Now, let's say that you wanted to have a line that sort of went out on the top and the bottom. We can simply create another rectangle. So I'm going to right click and duplicate. I want to choose the one that's below it. The, the, at the top of the layers panel is in front the bottom of your layers panel is behind. That's the best way to navigate your layers panel in relation to your document. So this one, I am going to fill with this color red. So I'm just going to come up here, grab that dropper. I'm going to click and drag, bring it right on over, grab the red. And that's my filled circle. And then my open circle, I want black. It's already black, so that's perfect. What I'm then going to do is add some stroke weight to that, which we can do that up here in our context toolbar by clicking on where there's a line that says none and just adding a little bit of stroke weight. Now, I currently can't see it because it's behind the um, other one and it's also set to erase. So we're going to come up here to that drop down. Again, we have that second layer selected and we're going to do normal. And then I want to make it smaller than the top rectangle. 
on the sides. And then I'm just going to drag it up a little bit on the top and then recenter it. There we go. So when I move it down, again, we get those snapping guys, which helps us know that it's centered. And then when we let go, we have a matching red with black. It fits our A aesthetic, and we can just go ahead and put our name in the middle. We will do this by selecting our artistic text tool, which is going to be the A. Click and drag, and then type out our name. Sorry, I got a new keyboard. <laughs> I was hitting the enter. All right, so we've got our name, Olivia Zari. And I found like a cute font earlier on Creative Fabrica. I'm going to use this one. I'm going to select my move tool, bring that down into my space until I see that red line and then resize it so that it fits in there. Now from here, you can choose to resize both your rectangles, shrink down your font, whatever it is that works best for you. So I'm going to get it just so I can eyeball it. It looks good and centered. And now I want to come over to this transform panel and click and drag all of my layers. And let's see, the one that's furthest out is a bit misleading. See how our boundary box is over there. So let's just grab just that red and black rectangle because that's technically our furthest width and check the width. So we see that this is at six and a half and the maximum space that we're willing to fill is ten and a half. This means that we could actually choose to resize this a little bit more if we wanted to, which I think I'm going to. So I'm going to click and drag to grab all of those layers. You can also just hold down on your shift key or control key. If you hold down your control key, you can select each ind individual one. If you hold down your shift key, you can select the first one and the last one, and it'll automatically select everything in between. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to come over to my transform panel. I don't want to drag on the boundary box nodes and skew this. I'm just going to come over here to make it easy and make sure that aspect ratio is locked. And where it says width, I'm going to try and go with like a nine. And then I'm going to go ahead and recenter that. Kind of move it around until I'm happy with it. And release. Okay, perfect. I love it. Next, I'm going to click and drag to group all of this together. Oops. Actually, I think I'm going to make my A just a little bit bigger. Even though we went with a height of 5.5, I think I'm going to move it up to 6 because I think it'll just look a little bit better. There we go. Designing is all about thinking about that aesthetic. So now I'm going to click and drag and right click, group that together. And I don't want to risk having this cut off, so I will rotate this by coming up to my rotation tools, rotating counterclockwise. We can zoom out for a second and go ahead and just center that on our page. Again, I just like things centered. Makes me happy. All we have left to do is send our file to print. We can do this by coming to File, Print, and selecting our printer from the drop-down menu. We are using our new Epson SureColor F570 printer today. So you can see that I already have that selected. And once you select your printer, you're then going to click on Properties. This is where you will set any type of additional settings you have for your specific printer, whether that be the type of paper that you're using, color correction settings, choosing an ICC profile, etc. None of those things are necessary with the Epson SureColor F500 series printer. Um, honestly, everything about using this printer is so smooth and effortless. It's kind of amazing. <laughs> Coming from the Workforce 7710, I really didn't have many issues with my Workforce printer, but this is a whole new world and I am loving it. So once you open up this properties panel, if you are using the Epson F570, you want to make sure you come to source and switch it to the auto sheet feeder if it is not already on that. And then you can choose your media type. You can keep it set on use printer settings, which will use whatever you've set the printer to, or you can go ahead and select whether you're doing textile or a rigid material. Now, if you have the printer set to one and you select the other, so we set that to textile if we choose rigid, you will get this little bit of alert here. Um, so again, I'm just gonna switch that over to textile because that is what we are using. Now, 
there's no real need for color correction settings with this because it is designed for sublimation and has a very great um, color accuracy. I've done quite a few prints already just to test it out with different things and been very impressed all along. Again, at just how effortless this printer was to set up and get running and the quality of what you're getting for it. It's definitely the best value on the market and quite possibly one of the best purchases you can make for your business, especially with the versatility in page size that it has. Now, if you have this print preview check marked, another pop-up will happen when we hit OK and OK again. You don't have to utilize print preview. I personally don't, but I will show it to you guys just so you know what it looks like. So I'll leave that checked. So once you have this ready to go, you can click on OK and OK again. And you're going to get this print preview pop-up here. Now, there are some additional settings here. None of those are relevant to what we're using today, but you do have that ability to um, reduce or enlarge, choose options for your roll paper, nothing that we're specifically using today because we're just printing on letter size. So you'll notice that it is mirrored because that is going to be the default for choosing that textile option. And we can go ahead and click print and it's going to send it off to our printer. The first thing that we want to do before we apply our transfer to our hooded towel is go ahead and lint roll this and also pre-press it. We always want to make sure to pre-press textiles because this is going to help push out any moisture that is within the fabric. When you fail to pre-press adequately, you are most likely to have ghosting. Ghosting occurs in this instance because the ink is converting to a gas and attempting to get into that fabric as the fibers are shrinking. Now this should not seem new or weird to you guys because if you have ever put your clothes in the dryer to try and shrink them, you know exactly what I'm talking about. When you take your clothes out of the dryer, they always feel smaller. And then as they hang in your closet or wear on your body, they begin to feel looser. This is because they are absorbed moisture and it's stretching out the fabric. So we want to make sure that the fibers are not shrinking while our transfer is on there because that is the most frequent cause of ghosting. So let's start by giving this a good lint roll because we just don't want any weird fuzzies, dog hair, anything else on our substrate. I've got this sort of at an angle on my 16 by 20 heat press to make sure that we get it fully covered. And then we'll go ahead and slide that back in. And press it on down. Now my rule of thumb for pre-pressing is to do half of the time that you will be pressing the product. So in this case, 25 to 30 seconds is all that we need. I'm gonna be doing about 50 seconds at 385 degrees for my actual press on this product. Um, if you are in a higher humidity time of year in your area, then I highly recommend you do a full-time pre-press. In the summer here in North Carolina, I absolutely do 60 second pre-presses. It's just good practice to make sure you get all of that moisture out. All right. Let's see if we can get this in a way that's a little easier for you guys to see. Since our design is only going in the middle, we don't really need to worry about it hanging off like this. But if you are doing full bleed, Make sure you take advantage of doing that at an angle. Never hurts to do an additional pre-press on textiles. Lint can often turn blue or red when it's on your substrate. Now I have my transfer right here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off any excess. The main reason that we do this is because if there is some phantom ink on the edge of your paper with any printer, and I have had this happen when I had a sawgrass, it's happened with the um, Workforce 7710 that I've been using for the last few years, and I have even already have had it happen in my testing with the F570. That ink that you absolutely can't see on the edge of your paper will transfer onto your substrate. So it is just good practice to always trim your transfers. And in this case, it makes it a little easier to line things up if it's not so big. So I am mostly gonna eyeball this. I 
haven't pulled out the laser level in a while. We've got our handy dandy laser level. I love this guy. So we'll go ahead and line him up so that we can see how things are falling here. I'm gonna try and go at the bottom of the A first. Okay. Looks like we're pretty good there. I'm liking the visual space between the top and the bottom here. And we look fairly centered. You can always choose to use a t-shirt ruler um, or even a uh, tape measure. If you wanted to check, I have a handy dandy t-shirt ruler here. So if I line that up, try and get eight and eight on the edges there. There we go. I can see that that's going just about centered. Let me double check. Yep, it looks pretty good. I could probably move it over just a hair, but you know, depends on how much of a perfectionist you are. <laughs> um, if you would prefer to tack down your paper, you can do that with any repositional spray. I There are a few different ones that I like. When I recently went out to get the Elmer's one that I've used for a while, they didn't have it. So instead I got this quilt basting spray. The main thing is it has to be temporary and repositional. You do not want this to be permanent. That will be a disaster. If you're doing something like this, I always recommend putting a little paperweight on your transfer, shaking up your spray really good. Never spray the transfer. Always spray the fabric and do it at a nice good distance. And then go ahead and press it down. Again, minimal movement. You are not trying to blur any of your... Um, any of your thing and be careful that nothing gets goopy when you do this. You can also use tape. You can also use nothing. Most of the time I use nothing. Um, it really kind of depends for you guys following along. I do like to use something because sometimes you're beginners. Last but not least, some blowout paper. Slide it on in. It looked like we were getting pulled off. All right, so we are doing 385 seconds today for 50 seconds. Um, you will do 50 to 60 seconds depending on your heat press and the paper that you're using. I am using printer jack paper, again, with my Epson Workforce, uh, sure, no, sorry, my Epson Sure Color F570. Um, the printer jack paper has a faster release by about 10 seconds, so I just decrease my time to that with this paper. Also, we're using our Stahl's Hotronics Fusion IQ. Absolutely the best purchase I have made. Oh my goodness, do I love this heat press. <laughs> it has this really amazing digital interface where you can save all of your settings, makes life so much easier. I absolutely love it. And I love this very sexy slide out drawer. I'm gonna be really careful to pull this out. Pull off our paper, pull off our transfer. And then give this a nice good shake. Ooh. Basically shaking it like a Polaroid picture. And I always do this with textiles to release any kind of press lines. You want to do it while it's hot. Let me see if I can get that up there. Um, shaking it like a Polaroid picture will help get rid of any press lines. You can always give it a nice good stress as well. You wanna do this while it's still warm. You don't wanna let it cool like this because then your press lines are permanent. And there we have it. I think I like it. What do you guys think? <laughs> so again, this is the hooded baby bath towel from Johnson's Plastics Plus. It is available in both pink and blue. Um, and you can choose to either print it all the way in this white hooded area or do something like this with a character or a monogram like I have. The resale price point on something like this is going to be $25 to $30 as long as you are choosing to do that personalization. That personalization is going to be the key to helping you get a higher price point with this. This is also a great item to put together in a baby gift basket or a baby shower gift. So if that is your market or that's a market that you want to sell to, consider 
creating some type of cute little gift basket with some cheaper items that will entice your customer to see a higher per perceived value for your overall product. Thank you so much for joining us today. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel and you can find everything that we use today linked in the video description. Have a great night.